Hello everyone. One of the questions that gets asked often is this, how do I become a data scientist? So I put together a list of seven steps which I think you could um, ask yourself and you should know. Uh, so in this two minute explainer series, uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's dive right in. The first one is probably applicable across rules. Uh, the question you should ask yourself, why? Why choose data sciences? Why does it matter to you? Is it because of the pay? Is it because you think everyone else around you is doing the new MOOC around machine learning? Is it because um, the HBR called it the sexiest job? Or you actually believe that it, you can help businesses unlock uh, value from data? And knowing this, uh, knowing your why is critical because it allows you to pick up skills that matter and in chartering a path that is very unique to you, right? Second thing, um, not all data scientists are the same. How do you identify areas that align to your uh, key strengths? So this moniker for data scientists is such a loosely used term to bucket people with varied skill sets. Um, so some folks, if you think about it, are, are, uh, they come with a software engineering background. They write beautiful code. There would be others who love storytelling and they can translate this into what does it mean to the business with multiple stakeholders. There are yet others who are great with ETL tools and APIs and they work well with data engineering. So uh, your career path would be accelerated the closer that your role aligns with your core skills. Yeah, so that's the second one. The third one, do you actually know what happens in the life of a data scientist? And some folks that I speak to who want to get into this uh, have such a stilted view of what a day-to-day -day, uh, work of a data scientist looks like. And this is information you could easily garner. Uh, reach out to a dozen folks and ask them about what is it like? Uh, what do they actually like about their work? What is it that they dislike about their work? And it's... Uh, it is easy to get excited about building out neural networks, but the day-to-day -day work involves doing a lot of not so glamorous things as well, right? Cleaning and tying together disparate sources of data, which sometimes don't even talk to each other, right? And um, uh, ending up doing version control and DevOps and documentation even. Uh, so do that, right? Understand what is the take. And the fourth one, which I'm gonna borrow from Seth Gordon is this. Be an artist, not a painter. Should I be getting this particular certification in this MOOC online? Uh, should I take up this course instead? So there are a lot of these questions which bubble up from people. Um, and if you have actually followed the earlier three steps, right, you, would, you should know what would ideally help you. Yes, by all means, do focus on the learning, learn the fundamentals. Um, Python is oft recommended uh, for beginners, but while you learn, focus on the concepts rather than the uh, syntax. And sometimes you may not necessarily need complex uh, models to answer questions. Uh, your cutting edge model in itself um, may be trained on the wrong data. Um, you may not do a data feasibility or validation. You, do you actually focus on translating the output into an outcome? Can you connect the dots um, amidst these multiple teams who are actually involved in driving um, data projects? Can you bring in clarity about why the insight is important and what is it that uh, business can do about it? So if all you can do is code in Python, uh, there's always going to be someone else who can do it faster and cheaper. So develop skills that are not replaceable and that you do by being curious and uh, questioning things around you and understanding them. Fifth one, create a portfolio and put your work out there to speak for itself. So uh, can you explain the implications of the project you built to someone else? Um, and there are a lot of young folks out there who are doing an exceptional job by putting their work out there, which speaks for itself versus like a static CV, right? So do that. Uh, the sixth one, uh, making a transition or breaking into the space. And again, this may vary for people who are complete beginners to those who may have some experience. So at any point in time, working in real life uh, problems provides 10x the value which um, as compared to any curated content consumption. So if you're a complete beginner, it, uh, uh, 
a complete hard uh, data science position may be harder to land. So target roles which allow you to segue into data sciences, right? Say visualization or business analytics or data engineering. If you are an experienced professional, on the other hand, say with a software engineering background, opt for stretch projects or opportunities that allow you to work with uh, data teams or data related work within your organization. And um, the pivot may be to a junior position, but it will give you the real life experience that you need. Yeah. And the last one, again, is not very data science specific, uh, but very relevant nonetheless solve problems right that's the crux of it uh, can this automation save the team to us uh, can writing good code help someone else um, backfill uh, easier you know be your backup easier uh, do you have an actionable takeaway uh, at the end of the model are you giving the business stakeholders a bunch of so what's or you're actually translating it into what is it that they can do out of it so uh, this Musk, Elon Musk quote is very apt in this context, right? You get paid in direct proportion to the difficulty of problems you solve. Yeah. So those are the seven. I hope this has been useful to you. I'll talk to you folks very soon. Thank you. Bye.